Good evening, everybody. This is V from Q Garden Warrior, formerly Q Kitchen and Beyond. And I want to tell you a little story. You see this bulb? This is a gladiolia bulb. This is one of 35 bulbs that I got from Walmart on clearance for a dollar. Now, this is the only one I have left that I have not done this to. I remember when I was a little girl, my great great aunt would take her bulbs when she got them from the store and she'd peel this off. Now, after her bulbs had finished blooming, she would take them with a little bit of soil on the roots and um, she'd put them in a bag and put them in the freezer for just like two or three months. But we were in Florida, so, you know, we could get away with that. Um, <laughs> but she would take the outer skins when she got them from the stores and she would peel them off. Just like I'm doing. And she said that helped them to grow faster. Now if I can just get that one little piece off. You want to get this all off too. Kind of like you would peel the outer skin of an onion. Okay. Except for that one stubborn little piece right there, right? There we go. Okay. Now. What am I going to do with this? Well, first off, I'm going to take these scraps and put them in this bag. I'm going to add soil to that. There's three holes in the bottom for drainage. These are all the skins from 35 of those bulbs. I did have to throw two away because they were just total mush and there was no way it was going to work. But now I'm going to take this bulb. Oh, I see there's still some of that left. Get as much of this off as you can. There we go. There's a dog. And I'm soaking them. That'll help with the root growth. Just make sure they're not upside down. Like that one. See, that one's actually getting growth from the bottom and the top. All right. I'm going to let those soak. And um, it'll help with the root growth to rehydrate them. And next, I'm going to plop them in some soil. Now, these are some that I already planted. I did this just about... 20 minutes ago and you see there's one right in the middle there's a reason for that you see that little bit of soil down there I'm going to take some of the shells Voila. And then I can just feed this with scraps because there are some worms in here. And that'll act as a kind of like a compost in place. Now, notice this is a cloth grow bag. I'm going to water it here. I'm going to let some of that water go down. Now, this has drainage holes in the bottom. So that water that I just put down there can go up here. But this will be the only time I top water this. 
and that's just to make sure that it's all in there all watered in That was some very dry um, worm castings. So I'm waiting. I'm going to keep watering it until the water comes out the sides. Mostly because I did not, sorry about my arm there guys, um, rehydrate the soil before I put it in there. There we go. All right, that's when I know I've watered enough. And from now on, when I water this, I will be lifting this, watering that, and putting this back in there so it can underwater from the bottom up to the top. And I don't have to worry about my worms drowning because all the water is going to seep out. If you live in a hot, dry climate, there are bags that are white that will help keep the water inside. I'm going to try and find, I know exactly where I saw them. Um, it was Next Level Gardening, and I'm going to try and get his code that he has so that y'all can get maybe a um, discount from using that and throw my boy Brian a little bit of love. Because um, a lot of y'all, especially in Florida, have a problem with growing in grow bags. They dry out too fast. Well, he's been using them and uh, he says they work great. And he lives in California where it's, it's kind of dry and, and hot. Um, so <laughs> if Brian says they work, I'm going to believe him. I'm just covering those back up. And again, this will not be watered like this. Again, it'll all go into this cup, which will go deep into the roots. And then this will go down on top of it. Or I can just water on the top here. But what I'm trying to do is keep the fungus gnats away. So that's why I'm going to do it this way. Water in there, it'll seep out, go to the roots, put that in there, and the water will seep up. So, I don't know if that helps anybody, but I really hope it does. And that's how I plant my bulbs, because that's how my great-great-aunt did it. And that's how her family taught her. Um, they were from... Um, other than the United States, and uh, and so they were immigrants. When my great great aunt and my great grandfather moved here, they were small children, and um, they were Mennonites and brethren. So they were naturally farmers. They lived off their own land. So I'm going to trust what they did and said for years and years and years, above you know what some other person might tell me. So y'all have a great day. And I'll see you next time. Bye.